welcome to urogynecology and pelvic health care if you're watching this video today then you might be interested in vaginal surgeries whatever we do after ms obgy it might be infertility ivf laparoscopy gynae onco or a urogynecologist we all are basically a obstetrician obgy that's a bread and butter as a starting we have done a lot of vaginal deliveries in our residency uh, cesarean sections and if uh, we have been lucky abdominal hysterectomy one or two uh, if you're more lucky then you might have done vh for prolapse if you're very very lucky then you might have done even total laparoscopic hysterectomy but i doubt if anybody has done ndvh in their residency if yes please do let us know in the comment section so today we have jaise residents ne aankhe band karke bhi notes dalte ye aap main aise bolu ki aankhe band karke hi notes dalte वैसे ही टुडे वी हैव एन एन डी वी एच एक्सपर्ट हु हैव सो मच रिफ्लेक्ट एज ऑन लॉर्ड ऑफ सर्जरीज टुडे एंड टिल नाउ टिल डेट एंड वन ऑफ द एन डी वी एच एक्सपर्ट वी आर मीटिंग टूडे एंड वी लर्न द टिप्स एंड ट्रिक्स हाउ टू डू योर सक्सेसफुल फर्स्ट एन डी वी एच सर्जरी सो वेलकम डॉक्टर सोनल बटला मैम वेलकम मैम थैंक यू फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग आर इन्विटेशन एंड टीचिंग अस टूडे Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mohini. I am so glad that you have come to my door to have my tips and tricks. <laughs> I'll well, be very glad to teach the youngsters who are going to uh, do their NDVH for the first time. We can. I'm all in for discussion today. Okay. Very first, ma'am. सब को problem ये होती है NDVH में कुछ नहीं दिखता. कहाँ खड़े हो? So we'll start with the positioning. How you prefer? Assistant inside within the legs, or many have seen uh, assistant outside. legs ye karke so how is the See, position what what we prefer is and that we sit in front of the patient in front of the pelvis of the patient sure. and my assistant sits on the my left side okay, and sits. my second assistant sits on the right side so we have three stools okay. placed and it is a very comfortable position lights come from the behind mm. and the recorder also comes from behind mm. so it is a very comfortable position the patient is in a semi flexed position and uh, i think mm, that's wonderful. the best position to operate okay. for uh, sitting is something the stool should be there so i think your first fear has gone make your assistant comfortable because was nvh i think more than surgeon or assistant is more near to the patient yeah and then because tissue can't come to you you have to go to the tissue you have to go to the tissue and we all are obstetricians we all have delivered babies from that uh, vagina. vagina so the uterus can very well be delivered uterus mm -hmm. is many times lesser than the baby <laughs> yes very true so uh, second ma'am light लाइट बोलता है तो थोड़ा ऐसे करो सर्जन एडजस्ट बिकॉज सर्जन को ज़्यादा दिखता है असिस्टेंट आर नियर टू द पेशेंट बट सर्जन कैन डायरेक्टली सी असिस्टेंट में परेशानी हो जाता है कैसे पकड़ना है सो लाइक डू यू प्रेफर आजकल जो बोलते हैं हेड लाइट लाइक हेड लाइट इज वेरी गुड फॉर एन डी वी एच बट अदरवाइज लाइट कमिंग फ्रॉम द बैक इज ऑल्सो इक्वली गुड इक्वली गुड so nothing like we should prefer go for the headlight sufficient light is no, okay when the sometimes when we go to periphery the light goes off so we mm. are ready with headlights okay in that if cases if required only mm. in those cases we use headlights otherwise, otherwise we always do the light which comes from behind yeah. so mom we start when we start the ndvh hydro dissection or just with the without dissection do the NDVH see you put. first of all you catch hold of the lips of the cervix with the valsalam and pull in and pull out see what okay. is mobility mobility of the uterus and then you feel for the adnexal masses there should not be any adnexal mass and uh, another important thing i take into my account is that whenever i am doing a pre op assessment of a patient who is undergoing ndvh i look for the transverse diameter of the uterus okay if the transverse diameter of the uterus on ultrasound is more than 6 cm these surgeries usually fail okay that is but if it is not if it is less than 5 cm less than 6 cm and it is vertically taller then the uterus comes out okay and there should no be less than the vertical obviously yeah transverse diameter should, should be less than 6 cm vertical can be any okay vertical 
So, uh, hydro dissection again? Yes. Yeah. So, when you catch hold of the cervix with the volcillum, two volcillum you should use and always do hydro dissection. I'm just to interrupt. Uh, two volcillum for to hold the anterior and posterior, posterior separately. And posterior separately. But many surgeons, I'm saying they prefer to it one only so they have proper traction. Any specific reason to hold it separately? See, anterior and posterior traction is there. Hmm. So, it is helpful. Okay, it, both is there. You, you get okay, a very good, good descent traction. with it. Okay. And uh, do the hydro dissection. We use one in uh, uh, 200 ml of normal saline and one ampule of norbutynin. That is the standard. And it is to be injected uh, all around Periphery. between the vagina and the bladder. And cutting of the lateral vaginal walls. I think that again there are many techniques. So what is the most common? 10 to 2. Then uh, they don't cut it circumferentially. In some cases of NDVH, anything specific? See, I have always cut circumferentially. circumferentially so and I that. never had any problem. They say that you may get uh, wall prolapse later on mm, or things that's like that. But that I have issue. never faced any such problem so, ever. Because you are not cutting the cardinal ligament. Hmm. You are just cutting, cutting the, the vaginal, vaginal, vaginal walls. Okay. You are cutting the vaginal wall only. Very you are true. not cutting the ligaments. Very true. Do that, so. On ligaments, you are applying and the clamps only. Absolutely. Again, uh, with this mom, this chart now, uh, if there is a cervical fibroid or any small fibroid at the level of os at the beginning only, whether difficult, usually the first clamp is easy, even in the NDVH, even for the beginners, I think many will agree the first clamp is quite easy, uterocycle, still we will be able to do it. So, if there is any fibroid in that or that, how to approach in that cases? See, if there is presence of a fibroid, then there is a clear cut criteria which fibroids not will come vaginally, vaginally and which will not. not come. Okay. So, this is very clear that any fibroid which is lying at a 90 degree angle to the mm -hmm. cervix okay. will be difficult to remove. Definitely. And secondly, any broad ligament fibroid, it is a little difficult. It may come, but it mm -hmm. can be difficult. Then if there is large fundal fibroid, which is 10 into 10 centimeter or more, then it's definitely. difficult. Oh, no. Or if there is uh, this lantern appearance, lantern mm -hmm. on top appearance, the, the fibroid is presenting and the uterus is sitting uh, above, above, then also it is a little difficult. difficult to this. The posterior wall fibroids are comfortable, comfortable which and be. multiple fibroids in uterus are comfortable. comfortable. Also, that can be offered. Ma'am, any specific energy source to be used or prefer to energy source or the, my question regarding to this is like in NDVH, actually the space is limited. We can't see it's only a step by step. One you to the uterus, then you are able to see the other. So many fear. What we get the question is again this with the energy source uh, is safer to use energy source in VH. By many of them are comfortable because we can see how much lateral damage. So in any way, is there anything or we can use who are comfortable for energy see, source? See whichever way the surgeon is comfortable doing surgery, that they is should do, do that. that, that if they are comfortable with suture. They should use, use suture. suture. If they are comfortable with energy source, then of course bipolars are very the nice bipolars are very mm, and they bipolar can be used safely. It is only at the point when you are like getting the infundibular pelvic ligament. At that point you have to be very cautious. Because mm. I had one patient with the urethrovaginal leak after NDVH with okay. energy source. I had one patient. That way but otherwise, uh, it's a very comfortable procedure. Any specific clamps for the tubes and ovaries retraction? From uh, see, when uh, this is uh, regarding the adenectomy while mm. doing NDVH, the important, the most important tip is that you should always bisect the uterus. Okay. Put one half in and take out the other half. Then mm. hold the fundus of the uterus with the volcillum. And then you cut the round ligament as far as possible. This will bring the infundibular pelvic the ligament down. down. So and then you can apply a clamp on the back. Any normal clamp works. You don't okay, need to put any special curved clamp, no special instrument, instrument is required. And first you need to cut round and then go for the infundibular. Then go Some for the directly go first for the infundibular yeah. because it will refract. And don't uh, try to apply the infundibular pelvic ligament directly. Okay, first cut the round. First, you cut the round ligament as far as possible towards the lateral pelvic wall, hmm. and then the round ligament, the infundibular pelvic ligament, will itself come down and tell hmm. you to clamp it. Okay, ma'am. In NDVH, uh, when with the, I think first difficult or half the battle one is when we enter the anterior and posterior pouch. Uh. So to hold the anterior pouch, to dissect it, to do the traction and counter traction, I think that works. 
you should use alis or pack that is also very few because the bladder is near alis i use valsalam holding the uh, anterior and the posterior lip Oh. and then i do either sharp or blunt dissection. but to the counter traction for the anterior vaginal wall we should hold it the bladder we should hold it with alis i don't hold it off. with anything oh. i catheterize all the patients before doing the surgery and if it she's previous cesarean section i do sharp dissection and i always go through the lateral uh, window dr shade's window okay if it is uh, previous is surgery previous cesarean section and if she's, uh, she doesn't have any previous cesarean section and you've done hydro dissection then bluntly you can uh, push oh, the okay, bladder that's away. i uh, don't think you need to hold the bladder oh uh, it's also taught in resilient like uh, don't use the gauze piece you slide no it doesn't matter pose. if yeah. you have done hydro dissection then that's the safest method, method to safest method to proceed with nothing mm -hmm. else so ma'am this is there when you are, again i think again the same the space and all uh, i think checking a hemostasis is again of itself a task in ndvh any specific method or how to check because once anything get retracted ndvh you can't see the clamp very down niche so how to check for each step or anything i think many techniques are there you insert the fluid anything special how to be sure see whenever you suspect any bleeding from any ligament while doing ndvh just remember that everything is available within 2 inches okay nice. every ligament will be within 2 inches reach so you just sponge holder put it inside and be careful that you don't leave the gauze inside mm. and then you can visualize one side at one go and the other side at one go wherever okay. you are seeing that there is any bleeder catch hold with the the clamp and just tie it ma'am mm. uh, just i proceeded further uh, what about the bisection of the uterus uh, it should be mosellated by valve technique how to dissect when there are many ways of handling the uterus see if it is a small uterus then bisecting the uterus and taking it out one by one that's the easiest method if you cannot manage with it then myomectomy is another way whichever whichever I myomas guess, you come across just keep on removing them third thing is that you do wedge morselation you remove one, half of the uterus just cut the pieces and the mm. uterus keeps on descending and last is uh, coring subserosal coring coring is also so coring is also very helpful in removing and the this all are to be done after uterine artery like after it. ligation the okay. ligation of the uterine bilateral okay. uterine arteries and after opening both the pouches pouches obviously and in when we come to again we go retrospective when the opening pouches there are even some methods which is the extra peritoneal ap uh, approach to for the uterus sacral without opening the posterior as we do in manchester sometime manchester modified manchester we open the uh, posterior pouch but in manchester we don't and we take the clamp so this also can be uh, done in ndvh if it's not new because i think all yeah. have the fear of that also no even if you are not able to open both anterior and the posterior pouches just make sure that you are not catching hold of the bladder bladder or the rectum hmm, anything else over anything else taken. you can apply clamps clamps okay that one thing is can be so once the uterus is jewel now what about the peritoneum closure should we i usually don't close the peritoneum though the rcg guidelines say that in order to prevent uh, prolapse vault prolapse you should do high circumferential closure, closure, closure of closure. the peritoneum and the second important thing is that if there is any bleed from any of the pedicle mm -hmm. then instead of going in the blood will come out come out so it should be closed but i haven't followed that okay. so i think means you have obviously we have seen good results of this so peritoneum closure is one thing and the vault closure uh, is again it's a fearful that anterior anterior vaginal wall when we take the stitch that bladder and the patient will have the constant when the vault is uh, discharge from the vault or we should even leave the drain is also some See, drain should be left if you are suspecting any problem problem okay never Not hesitate routine, to especially for the beginners because Beginners, when they do any surgery, they always has a fear. So you can always leave a corrugated drain, drain corrugated, and or uh, Foley's catheter. Foley's can be left there for one one day, twenty four hours. You can leave the Foley's there, or the drain also. Yeah, this can be done. Okay. Um, post op, uh, even when the vaginal wall, how it should be closed, interrupted, continuous. Just some keep the space. If there is any collection, it will. Huh? Yeah, it will come out. So I usually catch hold of the angles, tie them, and take one round on both the sides, mm. and take a last stitch in the center. Okay, 
and never leave any raw area when you are approximating the interior and the posterior. Otherwise, it will Otherwise discharge they will, something. They produce Problem discharge. Section, but if you are uh, very uh, this thing, then uh, approximation is good. Then there is no reason for any kind of discharge in the post-operative period. Usually, ma'am, NDVH uh, they are not associated with uh, anti-vaginal prolapse, but there are cases where we have seen that there is NDVH. Uterus is not descended, but there is cystocele with this NDVH with uh, anterior vaginal wall prolapse. So in this we should proceed first for the cystocele in VH some prefer to do first the hysterectomy and then I the always do hysterectomy first and repair the uh, cystocele so later on. Yeah. That's also the same yeah. anesthesia yeah. procedure. We followed. give an inverted V incision, remove the vagina mm -hmm. and just plicate the bladder base and uh, repair yeah. the cystocele. So anybody who want to select their, their first NDVH case, how to start with first degree, second degree? See, if the you, st you start with in a multi paras woman who mm. has three Delivered. to four deliveries previously. Previously, so it will be So easy. it will be a very mobile, very pliable, mm. Mm, she'll have very pliable tissues. And when you pull the cervix with the valsalum, if it is moving freely, it means that this will not cause any problem. And then the subcubic angle should be less than nine, should not be less than 90 degrees, and the intertuberous diameter should not be less than nine centimeters. And uh, and there should not be any adnexal mass. There should not be any fullness in the bilateral fornices. I think uh, NDVH is an easy task to go mm. ahead, and this is the most rewarding surgery if you talk about uh, hysterectomies. Mm. Ma'am, easy to nahi hai, but uh, it's a very is nice, very it's comfortable, nice. Yeah. It's a scarless procedure, less Easy blood mobilization. loss. Uh, yeah, patient is uh, mobilized the next day only. It is very comfortable. Yeah, so, so I think ma'am, uh, nowadays is a very charm of lap and again from lap we are proceeding one step further. The robotica is coming more into gyne also. So I think vaginal surgeries, I think from, I think according to me it's a dying art means you no know, many of them they are attracted more towards the lap and robotic but we as a obstetry OBGY uh, vaginal I think it's an art more of them it's not easy but many lap surgeons also don't do or don't prefer to do NDVH so uh, for this uh, I think the patient awareness is also there once we explain them what is NDVH like, want, we'll do it NDVH they are like in any durbing means like for them that is the more superior Still, lap also has still the incision three, four, kuch to rehti. Even a single port in uh, lap or robotics still has single incision. So, how to make the awareness of the patient like this? Because anything, I think, for the beginners or even for the experience, I think there's always when you do any vaginal procedure, if you already take the risk consent for shifting for the abdominal. I think that's one of the things. So, how the patient can be consulted? Any tips for the patient counseling also? See, the Cochrane database says. The Cochrane database first 20 go for NDVH NDVH. says oh. that you should go in for vaginal root. root. You should always attempt vaginal surgery because that's the safest, mm. less uh, time consuming, patient has least morbidity and mortality. It can be done under spinal anesthesia. Minimal instruments are used. The assistant should, may not be very skilled. You can mm. just use a star retractor and do your NDVH. Mm. So, uh, NDVH is the most appropriate route to be used for hysterectomy in all the patients. Uh, since all the companies are there for robotics and, and for lap. laparoscopy, hmm. so uh, I mean they are that is a this data mode of surgery hmm. is being publicized. I don't say that they should not be done. If indicated, yes, then yes robotic and uh, laparoscopic surgery should be done. But there is always a role of trial vaginal hysterectomy. If you, if you just try, see it is the attitude of the surgeon. If the surgeon mm. decides a road map that tomorrow in the OT I am going to plan vaginal hysterectomy, I will go step by step this way, I think 90% of the, them will be able to do it. Mm. And for that, for those 10% the, the procedure can always be converted. Com and I think this and uh, patient awareness, uh, as far as uh, the patient awareness is concerned, see you do surgery on one patient, she will bring two more. Mm, that is also so you don't need to publicize it. And this is an art which is uh, uh, very rewarding. I mean, this is the uh, this is the most important. I can see the service. happiness, mom, mom, yeah, no, that you can do to it. your patients. You know, when when we go on a camp, we do all vaginal surgeries. Mm. Almost 90% are vaginal hysterectomies. 
and then uh, there is always some gift for the patient so i have seen patients uh, uh, getting hysterectomy done and carrying a blanket on their shoulders and going mm -hmm. home the second day so very you feel very good, good for them that very nice it Actually. is very nice and many of my patients they have driven back home after getting a vaginal hysterectomy done oh they have driven their own car to go home. i think this can be a good thesis topic also <laughs> this days in our hospital we have started uh, discharging patients after 24 hours Mm. So they go home after 24 hours. This is one thing nice. And I think even ma'am, everybody should know the vaginal root NDVH because even if they are going for the lab, they might stuck because lab also initially yeah. need to be open. So if you know the NDVH, half you have done the upper ligaments and rest of the uterus the you can you know, now, alleviate. Now that uh, this thing is important that you should not uh, morselate the, the yes, fibroids uh, mm. without endo bag. And endo bag is not an easy, easy thing job to handle. Even not it, high. It's time yes. consuming. Then it everything. involves costs also. So you can always uh, cut the round ligament and the infundibular pelvic ligament from above, and you can retrieve Retrain. the tissues you from You can do below. the elevation, like you yeah. can do. Yeah. And if you get expert into that, then you turn into NDVH yeah. only. Yeah. Then you yeah. prefer start ah. doing your NDVH, NDVH rather than doing LVH. Ah, LVH. So even those who are wishing or thinking of doing NDVH, you can start even with lap. You lap, you do the first two ligament and then you can yeah. learn NDVH. I think that mobility and come some decent mm -hmm. reason, then mm -hmm. again it's more better than this. These today. days uh, for ovarian masses, benign ovarian masses, what we do is that we uh, remove the ovary from laparoscopically and then we cut the POD and retrieve the tissue from below. Oh, that is also good. Yeah. So that there is, um, I mean, no need to use endo bags mm. and no need to proceed for any for fancy you. things. And it is very easy to remove this ovary from below. Mm. Below. So, uh, topics also like I've mm. seen and read that our vaginal tubal ligation, which is now a totally dying guard. Yeah, very few. <laughs> I've seen recently under Professor J. V. Sharma sir at Aims uh -huh. Delhi the vaginal tubal ligation, but I've seen only there, not before or not even afterwards. I have done vaginal tubal ligation, but was thoroughly discouraged. Oh. <laughs> Oh, because uh, they said that there is uh, chance involvement. Of yeah, if they, if by chance she gets infected, and this mm -hmm. is a national program, so you should be careful. Delivery be vaginal see or tubal again. Again, vaginal. If you talk about, uh, we did the Manchester over in dermoid removal also can be done from below. Yeah, scar endometriosis. The, which we yeah. do, the, that is also something mm. which can be done vaginally, and so I think vaginally, I think mainly the bladder and the vision is problem. But we have solved a lot of tips and tricks for that. This type thing. But patient criteria: previous LSCs, yes or no yes. mobility. Yes, we can do it in previous yeah, LSCs. Yeah, we can do it. Previous three cesarean also we have done uh, mm. vaginally. And if the uterus is palpable abdominally. We can see, try initially. See, you should, for when you are starting, then you should start on a eight normal week size, size uterus, eight to ten week, week size, size uterus. Okay. And gradually you will learn to handle 12, 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. Gradually you can go above that. Mm -hmm. But to start with, you should start on eight to ten weeks uterus mm -hmm. with no adnexal pathology. Okay. And suppose, ma'am, sometimes the cases happen like it's a 14, 16 weeks uterus, and patient is having cystocele and the rectocele also. So, we should repeat this from above only or we do the from above below only. only. So, uh, and surgery from you can do it yeah. from above. Yeah. Repoid is just a rectus will always do from the below. It can be done from above, above also, also. But better that's when I was Yeah, most. but it is more comfortable but from below. Be below it's to be done. Yeah. Any uh, other ma'am, um, like from any other criteria from NDVH? Uh, like ovarian mass is there, so we should do a CA125. And it's compulsory to remove, like uh, nowadays, we whenever we do the hysterectomy, we remove the tubes. Yeah. So, how easy or how difficult is to remove your tubes from vaginally? See, the literature says that you should remove the tube in a patient only if you are comfortable vaginally. Okay. If you think that this is going to lead to excessive bleeding, mm, then don't because touch it. it's Oh, they're quite fragile. And you can gradually yeah. improve your skills in removing the tubes. tubes in every patient. Now we are removing tubes from below in every patient. Hmm. We are using the Malibu. bipolar device. Okay, there we can specifically yeah. use it. So you device. catch hold of the fundus of the uterus and then you can hold the tube with the babcock and just with the bipolar you can cut the, tube you do the self-injectomy and remove it with the uterus. The specific is that there you can 
prefer to use energy source yeah, because energy it's not used. That it is very comfortable. Which would be done. Then um, post-op, NEVH patients um, develops later on ovarian benign dermoid or something like that. Uh, it's just because of that we have not removed from below. Or then in the next case, can we go it from below? Just like wall prolapse. Uh, NEVH uh, it's not a wall prolapse, but uh, it's I think easier because if we open or it's the fibrosis, we should not approach it from below. In the next advanced See, stage. in ones. every patient, now the Indian Menopause Society says that you should not remove the ovaries of the patient till 65 years, years of, of age. age. So you have to retain the ovaries if they are benign. And whenever you are doing hysterectomy, we always tell the patient that there is a chance of 8% chance of, recurrent, of uh, ov uh, development of ovarian mass hmm. post hysterectomy. Uh, if the patient develops an ovarian mass post surgery, I always get the tumor markers done, and I prefer going laparoscopically in those patients. Again, ma'am, uh, with NDVH only, uh, clamps uh, like it's double clamp or single clamp, anything, and usually in the uterine, you should not transfix. Same route what we do in the abdominal or anything. See, it is always better to use two clamps. Okay. Because if by chance one slips, one slips then, then you have a, yeah. When, uh, our teacher used to always say two clamps, one is for you and one is for the patient. One is for the patient. The patient and the yeah. source of the clamp. Ma'am, uh, how to get, uh, isn't it professional training or we can learn it independently, take the help from assistant or we should not fearful, any tips and tricks to that encourage the young students get encouragement for doing the individual. I think the space and the light issue is something the fearful because only the surgeon can see very true most of the part of NDVH or anything back assistants are usually not able to much see that much so how to this thing see we at Delhi we have started a society of vaginal surgeons of Delhi and uh, if you do wonderful live operative workshops yeah, we do live uh -huh. operative workshop every year to train the youngsters mm -hmm. and uh, now we are going to under the Delhi Gaini forum I am going to start a teaching program on vaginal surgeries I think okay. every three months we will hold a group of uh, students and we will try to teach them vaginal stectomy because this is a dying art. We oh, don't wish true. that this should, should die. die. Yeah. And uh, ma'am, there are many, uh, this thing also like broad ligament also has been removed from below. I think what yeah. the something should be set limited because experts can do anything. When I think first they see that, then whatever case comes, then we always think of that like, NDVH, this may be possible. I think there should be a restriction. I think broad ligament should not be approved if you are... No, if you mm -hmm. think that uh, the bro if, if it is pure broad ligament fibroid, then obviously you need to put in a laparoscope along with it. But if it is not a pure broad ligament fibroid and it is connected to the uterus, then it can be delivered mm -hmm. vaginally. vaginally you just introduce the myoma screw into it, it and you can pull it out. If off. the head of the baby can come out of the vagina, then a 7-8 cm fibroid Mom can is very pro that you should do NDVH. But if you can get out of the uterus, uterus then you can But don't take any chance with the safety of, of the, the patient. patient obviously first never thing. do try any always harm. try yeah and then never do any, any harm. harm yeah that is the first principle that's the first principle, principle of, of safety and of the a patient. surgeon must know his or her limitation. limitation that is the most yeah. important thing is wherever you feel that uh, no this may cause any harm to the patient convert the mode of the surgery, surgery. without any prejudice mm. anything like this also the uh, anterior post chip out you should have a time limit for this if it may khola then we'll proceed for NDVH. It's not like you're not having the time sense also while doing See, NDVH. See, when you are doing uh, vaginal surgery, your fingers start uh, um, deciphering which okay. path is right and which path is not. Okay. So they guide you. The feel of the tissues guide you whether you are in the right track or not. And okay, this sir. comes gradually. Over learning and learning. Mm -hmm. like more the assistant, more observing. Yeah. Single step, one step at a time mm -hmm. and this comes to you. The patient has, uh, doctor has selected a very good case with all the precautions, multi paras, good descent, good assistant, good light, good peritoneum closure, everything, drain has become, but still complications are yet to occur. Complications, something is like NDVH. Any specific complication of NDVH that occurs and we should take care of the step? 
see at an every step a complication can occur the first complication is that you may not get into the correct pre anterior tissue only that's i think biggest fear the pouch may entry yeah so always do hydrodissection for that that we have okay. made it very clear, clear in the beginning on you the second fear is that you may injure the bladder hai na while doing uh, the dissection previous mm. cesarean section Especially. you open up the bladder don't be fearful of that you can always stitch the bladder mm. but and from below only and from below only you mm. complete the hysterectomy mm. and then you repair the bladder there is mm. no need to hurry or panic to do the bladder repair mm. first and uh, do the hysterectomy later okay this is also one thing issue that first because it happens and obviously the any surgeon will panic for sure they need to mm-hmm. matlab need to calm down but obviously there is a panic so first we should do the bladder repair or the because it's like if it left it will be more injurious yeah. by retraction no no i always prefer last. removing the uterus first first and then and then the. because if you have repaired the bladder first and then you proceed with mm. the surgery ahead then you may injure it further further also so That's always fine. remove the uterus first, first and then repair the bladder right. yeah again just ma'am and uh, when you are doing uh, the bladder repair just remember that uh, the ureteric orifices are close by mm. so never hesitate to put it uh, put in a stent from below okay if you are very close to the ureter ureters that is also one thing you should do and then only mm. again i was asking related this only uh, we should uh, is there an individual of vaginal surgery vaginal hysterectomy and which i think this is a good opportunity to do cystoscopies regularly yeah. because one is not used to yes, it now If that we are all doing hysteroscopies so cystoscopies so much easier train yourself uh, for cystoscopy cystoscopy because hysteroscopy still mm. requires some pressure mm. cystoscopy does not require after every uh vaginal hysterectomy you should do a cystoscopy to look for ureteric jets if jets are present it means you haven't done any, any harm to the ureters so that is one thing universal good. cystoscopy is not recommended is not us. recommended but, but you should do for learning yeah. because that's when only learn, learn because in the panic situation you can't learn and yeah. this thing so in every it's habit habit. In and it's more safety we can yeah. sleep better at night i think that's yeah. the best mm-hmm. patient we can sleep better at night you and can do it sister i'm a post here powder in this case a bowl cut or if we do the bowl cut you take for the post your pouch opening how to post your pouch because rectum also sometimes it may be add and sometimes there may be uh, like endometriosis there may be obliterated pures also in individual mm. the mobility of uterus maybe they are it not necessarily always we assess it very accurately in drop you get many surprises <laughs> that's the case so for that any precaution means head low or something like that we should do mm. no no you just uh, give an incision in the uh, posterior, posterior peritoneum and then you create the space on both Nick. the sides okay and then catch hold uh, of the uh, peritoneum with the artery and then, then open, it. open it and if it doesn't open don't push yourself okay because the bobble may be stuck there yeah. okay so just proceed on with his trick me mm. any other complication on specific clamp or the and related to any which in the pedicle may step may slip secondary hemorrhage yeah, reaction secondary hemorrhage may happen and then uh, ureteric injury is very rare but can happen mm. So because with be vaginal careful. prolapse the ureter also come down so yeah. in yeah. individual that is not there mm. so better means uh, if we say urinary tract injuries are lesser in individual lesser in individual so one this also one encourage uh, yeah because ureters are higher up. high up so this only if you suspend the vault with the uterosacral then mm. there is risk of but uh, in individual there is no prolapse so we don't yeah. so but we sus- always suspend uh, the vault of the vagina either with cardinal ligament Oh, my call yeah. my calls we in ndvh also yeah in ndvh also, also we, we always do, do my calls. calls okay that is one thing internal external both. yeah this thing to be because you cannot leave the patient for a second chance mm. so better to do first better. surgery is always yeah. the best surgery best surgery best what you can for the patient mm. so i think ma'am we have completed the majority of the topics and the tips and tricks and if you have any question ma'am will personally reply to it so please do ask thank you for giving your valuable insight ma'am thank you i encourage all the youngsters to go in for non descent vaginal hysterectomy this is the safest scarless mm. uh, associated with lesser blood loss associated with the early discharge then uh, minimal hospitalization then safe anesthesia 
and it's rewarding for both i think surgeon and the patient okay thank you ma'am thank, thank, thank you so very much thank, thank you, you.